Hi, and welcome back to DBU. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe. Today we're continuing our series of signal flow with the basics of patch bays. Patch bays are routing devices that allow the user to reconfigure a studio's wiring to suit a session's needs. They're usually laid out so that the top to bottom order of the points follow the signal flow of the channel's electronics. This is done to help the operator move quickly and to keep the electronic layout simple. Initially, I had a tough time understanding how to use a patch bay, but eventually I caught on. They're a lifesaver, especially when troubleshooting because they allow you to route around problematic circuits or to just simplify a recording path. On the screen, we have an image of a patch bay layout. You'll notice how it follows the top to bottom order of the channel strip. First, we see the preamps, then the small and large faders, then the inserts, the EQ outputs, and ultimately the direct outputs. This intuitive layout allows for the interception of the signal at critical points along the channel path and is done by design. Because grabbing a patch cable every time you need to make a connection is an impediment, bays include a method of jumping the signal around the back of the bay. We call this normaling. Patch point normaling is a method of hardwiring required connections like console and machine inputs and outputs on the back of the bay. A regular non-normaling point only has three connections, the plus, minus, and ground. A normaling point has two extra blades that when left closed, short or connect the signal to the contacts of the plus and minus. This way, whatever signal is seen on the point is also sent to the contacts for routing elsewhere, usually directly below it. Incidentally, the ground pin is usually assigned to the technical ground. In a full normal configuration, the top jack is linked to the bottom via these normal contacts. Its status is broken as soon as a patch cable is inserted into the jack. In some circumstances, we require a half-normal connection, where the normal wires are hardwired to the source patch blades, so regardless of the patch state, the signal is always present on the lower jack. Full normaling is best used for tape returns and mic lines, where the signal needs to be present at all times until a cable is inserted, thus breaking the normal. Half normaling is best used on insert sends where the signal needs to be present on both the inserted patch cable and the jack below it simultaneously. This allows for the insertion of a device without interrupting the signal flow while a connection is being made. A non-normaling bay is best in circumstances where you don't desire any relationship between the top and bottom jack, like an outboard preamp, EQ, or dynamics device. Sometimes in situations where a normal is present, it's necessary to interrupt the normal by inserting a cable but not connecting the other side. This is called dead patching. It breaks the normal and cuts off any further signal routing. This would be useful when interrupting the normal input path of a tape machine, for instance, thereby preventing the signal from leaking into a track when erasing it. Regarding types of bays, there are a variety of bays to choose from. Cheap quarter-inch plastic ones to high-end nickel-plated bays. Since you're more likely to wear out the contacts on cheaper bays, and they tend to come unplugged more frequently, they're really not good for long-term usage. Higher end plated bays resist corrosion and are built to withstand over 10,000 insertion cycles, but they're much more expensive to build and install. Lastly, non-plated points tend to corrode faster than plated points and will need to be polished or burnished from time to time. One has to be careful overdoing it as you can easily ruin a point. Smaller TT bantam points are even more susceptible to this damage and must be cleaned with care. 
Usually compressed alcohol and several twists of a plug inside the jack will do the trick, but for stubborn dirt, either a burnishing tool is required or worst case, complete dismantling the point and polishing with metal cleaner and alcohol. This is it for today's topic. Check back soon for more content and please subscribe. Cheers.